Hey, it's Joe Lyons from the Automator, and uh, I'm recording what we automated this week with Auto Hockey. First off, we're going to start with a little distraction. This is how my morning started out. Um, yeah, I uh, I decided to see if I could balance my tractor on the side and make it easier to change the oil. Yes, I'm kidding, um, but this is just a sign of don't quit your day job because uh, I uh, had a little problem with the tractor. Um, thankfully, I got it out okay, uh, but yeah, loads of fun. So anyway. Let me go launch prompt assistant, trigger here, all right, and tools, recently modified files. Oh, you know what? I didn't change the DPI. Let me launch that first, and I'll bump up my DPI. Much easier when you have a hotkey. Now, searching across the B drive, we did a lot of stuff. Really, I just recorded an amazing video with Isaias. Uh, this tool we made was really, really cool. Uh, can't wait to, to do a video on it. Um, we recorded a video, but I have to edit it and I'll share it probably next week or maybe this week. We'll see. So anyway, um, this was a client, Paul, man, we had a call with a guy. He had created like this braille keyboard. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, but he types and it's, it does the braille keys, at least for some of them. And with, with six keys, I think he says he uses, he can basically make any alphabet letter from a braille keyboard. Um, he... Also was partially blind, um, at least to some degree, but he's programming in on a hotkey and wanted some help. So we had a really good call with him. It was really cool seeing what he was doing with auto hotkey and a very, very fun call. Um, this lighter. So we were working on our quick raw edit, which we mentioned in another video of it's super cool. And we haven't incorporated it yet, but we made this slider, which makes it very easy to slide. Uh, the slider itself wasn't working the way we wanted it to, so we adapted a status bar tool. No, 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 we actually were doing that, but then Isaias learned how you can put in like little bookmarks on the slider and have it start and end, and that way it grabs the middle part. And so that's what we're going to use for our quick raw edit tool, because that's what you're doing is it allows any continuous section of your video and it exports it using FFpeg in seconds. It's really amazing. So that was really cool. We'll work on that, um, sharing that. Rizwan's been working that a lot, but we keep we've and it's not his fault. We've changed several things. There weren't there were things that just weren't working right, so we re redesigned it a little bit. Um, but maybe this week we'll have that out. We've been playing with Claude because again, Claude is the only one really offering V two Auto Hotkey code. Uh, working very, it's still you need some love sometimes, right? But it, it's helped us a lot already, and. We also, we're gonna have to make a video on that, and I should have had Isaias work on that today because that would have been a fun one for him. We added in VS Code, there was an extension that I watched a video on that allowed us to connect to Claude and put in our API token, token and use Claude for suggesting the auto hotkey code. Right now we pay for Copilot for um, a couple of the guys. That's 20, 10 bucks a month a piece. That's 20 bucks a month I'm paying for them. In using the Claude API, we only pay for the actual things that we send. So. It, it should still be less than ten dollars even if it's not it's, at least it's the pay as you go if you use it you get charged if you don't use it there's no charge right and claude right now is above and beyond ChatGPT. so the copilot one uses ChatGPT. the claude um we're obviously where it uses their sonnet new model so um we did that manually configured my vs code in Irfan's um to work properly but it was a little manual, and I think we can automate that process without a hotkey. So we'll probably make a script that will do it for people. Um, of course, you have to have your Claude API token, but yeah, it should really help with that. So that was some of that stuff. This compare sets. We actually used this script. I'm not sure why it got edited. Oh, because one of the, the um, I'll put the URL up in there. It's a really cool little tool. It um, allows you to compare lists of things. And one of the copies didn't work. When you when you copied one of the lists, it didn't quite work right. So we fixed that. This is the quick raw edit, which I think I mentioned last week. Uh, but yeah, that that's there. We made another tool uh, which allows you to hold down a hotkey. So I hold down a hotkey when I want to talk. So I hold it down. That triggers where it starts recording your voice. So you say what you want. When you let go of it, it takes that recording and submits it over to ChatGPT to their Whisper API, transcodes it, or um, transcribes it, and returns it back to you on your clipboard with the text. And it's very fast and very cool. Um, so that's a really cool one. Actually, I gotta remember to tell them we should switch this to mono because that'll reduce the file size, which should help with a little bit of the, the file transfer as well as the, um, 
I'm, I maybe the cost. I'm not too sure about that. But um, also, we're going to look at a different uh, instead of just doing MP3, maybe doing it with a different format. Opus, I think, is a, a one that might be a little bit better for a human voice. Um, Rizwa or no, Urfan has been working in this triggers class, and Isaiah and I, we were just discussing it because we might also let people have like set up an any file type of thing where you want credentials, and so. It makes sense because it's in our settings and stuff, and that's where our triggers class, which I think I demonstrated last week, where you can automate using a mouse click, a hot key, or a hot string. But also, Isaiah, on this one, we were like, hey, we need to let people enter their credentials, right, for like a, an API token. And he's like, I could see how that kind of fits in with that. I'm like, well, we could do that, but we have to change the name of the class so it's not just triggers, it'd be like preferences, right? So we might end up changing this name to be preferences instead of triggers but it's a really cool class that, that should be out here in a bit um more stuff with open ai transcribe video so this is the, the transcribe video that does the stuff it's really cool like i said we'll we'll have a video out that actually I'll, I'll edit it later today or tomorrow and we'll get that out um, we'll try to get that next week really really cool and lots of i'd love to hear your thoughts on how else what could we do with this because I've already thought up like a dozen different use cases of how we could use it in different ways. Even this one with the record, um, record and transcribe, I was thinking because Rizwan's his English, he's still learning English, and like we could actually have it not only transcribe, but he could be attending the call and have it just translating it for him on the fly, like breaking it up into every every thirty seconds or so, or every fifteen seconds or ten seconds. It cuts that audio. Sends it, gets it transcribed, gets it translated into Urdu, and displays on the screen, right? So, very cool stuff. Yeah, let's see here. These GUIs. Um, this is all same, same real, same stuff. A lot of stuff tied to that. Rich edit, which is really cool. There's a class in V2, which you can display, and then you can highlight and bold and put in colors and RTF, rich text format stuff, which is really handy. Um, Irfan, I don't know what this is, honestly. I don't, I'm not sure what he's doing there. This is a slider. Um, that was where we're working on with that slider thing I was telling you earlier. Uh, the toolkit v2. Um, don't tell Isaias. We, we've been using Claude to convert his Isaias's toolkit to v2, and I'm hoping he Isaias doesn't hear this. It, it doesn't matter. I just want to surprise him, but um, because it's a monstrous, it's like 7,000 lines when you put it all together, and so that was too big for Claude. So Irfan broke it up into each function and then he was using that tool I mentioned earlier with the extensions in VS code where you can give it some code and have it convert it and he got a long ways but he ran out you can do a million tokens a day even even though it's weird because you're paying for the tokens so you think it wouldn't really matter they wouldn't cap you but they do so you can only do a million a day and he did it for like two days and he ran out um, but so we're still plugging along on it but it's working really well um let's see more oh boy more so you can see here there's a lot of files for the toolkit um ffmpeg more of that notify so we were up, updating notify a little bit i forget what change we made in there but um isaias was noticing also when there's one really long string of text it doesn't do any sort of um line wrap so we might make a change there to where it will wrap the lines out you can set the you know Number of characters, break on like 30 characters or 60 characters so it doesn't make a crazy long thing. Uh, more with the triggers, plugins. Actually, I, oh, I, I actually, um, I was using this multi-file renamer during one of the hero calls. Um, Ray was working on a tool where he has a list view kind of like this, and he was wondering if we could color, like color all of these because they're all the same thing. Break these all, like make these all red, and that'd be blue and green. Oh, these would all be another color. So keep them in the sections. And I said, yeah, that's that would you could technically do it, but it's a lot of work. I said, what's easy is what if we put an icon at the very first column, and then we color those icons the same together, so it'll group them. And, he, and he's like, yeah, that, that's fine. So. Um, we were doing that and somewhere in there, oh, that's what it was. So I have a list of hundreds of icons and, um, I wanted to, initially we weren't going to try to have the program represented by the icon. It was just going to use like a color to group them. What we ended up doing was getting, cause Irfan was on the call and Irfan's like, no, 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 we can easily get the, the icon of the EXE. Cause that's what we were doing. Ray is working like on a process explorer type tool that lists the running programs and stuff. So they're all executables. It's not just files. And so um, we just use the executable icon. And, and the one thing that we did have a little hiccup with that was sometimes 
the tool itself isn't using the first X icon, uh, and so it's a bit, little misleading. But what I did really quickly with the multi-file renamer was I took all my icons and numbered them sequentially. I, I used a regex to remove the name and just numbered them, count them, use the counter index as the number for the icon number. So what icon one was 1.ico, the second one was 2.ico, the third one was 3.ico, right? So it, so it made it where we could easily just say, give me the next number up to I think it was 50 or 60 or so. Um, but this multi-file renamer, it's a V1 script. And I thought, hey, while we're here, let me see if I can convert that to V2. Well, again, that was like over 4,000 lines in Claude. And it might've been because we're using the same account. Um, it said it couldn't, it couldn't convert it because it was too big, but that could have been because I already used my, my bandwidth for that day. Um, but then we have a simple file renamer, which I don't remember if I changed, I, I think I looked at both of those. Uh, but then there's the, uh, I don't think, remember we actually changed that. That's interesting. Maybe Isaiah's made an update to that. So the Pretty Links tool, uh, it's really cool. We made an updated tool that allows people to, to get the automated resources. And so we were making some updates to that. So, it, now it actually pulls in the timestamps as well, which is really, really cool. So um, look for that on um, in YouTube. We'll have a video on that out, I think, this week. Or maybe next week. We've got too many videos that we're um, cranking out tools here. But it allows you to look for any of our videos with the titles um, going back all the way to the beginning of the channel, which is over 10 years now. And so we have like 1,400 videos. And then there's also our pretty links, so our links to downloads. And then as well, we have it where it brings in the V1 and V2 help. So that's a pretty cool tool. Um, that's this resource finder. Um, triggers, I already mentioned that. Add to lists. Um, that one's a bit complicated, but it has to do with our newsletter. The newsletter plugin, we have a WordPress plugin tool, which was really cool, because we could say, hey, if people downloaded X, Y, let's say they downloaded stuff, dealing with regular expressions, I'm gonna I'm gonna push them into this drip email drip campaign for regular expressions, um, which we have like five of our videos to our regular expression course. And unfortunately the regex, the, sorry, the um, WordPress plugin tool just stopped working and we put in a ticket and they didn't, they're not responsive and I don't know what's going on with it. So I'm really bummed. However, I realized we can do all the work ourselves to put them into that campaign and then the campaign will still be deployed because that part is still working. So we're going to manually take care of that. So that'll be really cool. Um, this one is Ace built me a little tool so I can check if a person is on this. Oh, and actually, let me see if I can. Well, let me go ahead and run it. So here now, if I had an email address selected on my clipboard, so let me bring up notepad and this is a really cool little lesson here to, to think about, right? So um, so right now, when I first launched that, I didn't have an email address on my clipboard, but let's say I was doing something. Let me close this. Now I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. Now, when I launch that tool, because, and it didn't work. That's interesting. That should have worked. Um, it should have pre-populated this with my email address. Um, and then I can hit search and it says, no, that email address, thank God, I'm not on my own suppression list. So. Some people will either buy a course from us or they get a, they order a download and now all of our downloads are at least a dollar, right? Because it's a long story, but um, this way they sometimes write me and say, hey, I, I paid for this tool or I ordered this course and I didn't get an email. And often they have unsubscribed from us. And so if they've unsubscribed from us, this is a very quick test because normally it takes me a lot of steps to do that. And what I can do is I can, if it was on there, I can hit add or, or I can hit remove. If you're a jerk, I can hit add and it'll block you. From our emails, but I can also remove you from the suppression list. So there's the mailgun email list on mailgun of people that are suppressed that are that we can't send to, and then on our WordPress website under the database, there's a list of people who are email ready, yes, kind of so to speak, that we can send emails to. Excuse me, they also get the newsletter. So this tool now updates that on both those things. So it's it's very very handy. All right, so moving on. Um, this res finder, we made an update to that and now it'll give you that system tray icon. I demonstrated that last week and I think I created a new video for it to demonstrate that functionality. So it's very cool. The screen locker in V2, um, during that call with the, uh, the person that was working in the Braille script, 
he was trying to block all keys except for the ones he cared about because he said when the people that are using this tool they send it a, a letter that's not in what they're looking for then it um it will crash it will break something so um isaiah has a, a key list thing in his v1 script um i used claude to convert it to v2 it seems to have worked but um we'll we won't share that yet because we actually got to test it uh but it did seem to work weekly hero content uh this is our summarizing tool Irfan did a little more tweaking to it because there were um some interesting things happening in it and it was picking up something it shouldn't have so we fixed that and then at the same time we decided the stuff that got posted onto our hero con con content page that's a secret page that you have to be a hero member to access it wasn't closing the indention off properly in the html we weren't sure if it was from the summarizing tool we use or from wordpress or what but i had Irfan just add a few more because adding a couple extra closing tags won't hurt anything so we added a couple extra and that now is fixing the problem because that was a nightmare but it's nice that that's gotten taken care of um and this one also in the newsletter now when you see the videos in the newsletter they have a play button on it and what we do is we i hit a hot key i select a url i hit a hot key it goes and gets the thumbnail and then it overlays the play button on top of it and saves that as an image moves it up into an ftp folder and then gives me the url for that to put in there so when you see it it looks like you can play them which of course you can it just will open in youtube but it, it'll more be more enticing to open it so that's what we've done 75 auto hockey files this week it's been a crazy week sorry about all the dinging um i turned off my notifications and somehow they're still coming through but anyway thank you i'm uh, glad i'm not dead um hopefully you you're glad i'm not dead too that uh tractor scare was um very very scary <laughs> and i'm saying that lightly it was it was really i don't understand how i didn't flip over uh, and it doesn't really come through but it's like a 15 to 20 foot drop on the other side of that so Thankfully, I had my seatbelt on, and I would have been sort of protected, but um, I'm really glad I didn't have to test that scenario. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.